Ladies and gentlemen, dear delegates, a good morning to you. Unfortunately, my agenda prevents me from joining you at today's conference. I would nevertheless like to share with you recent developments on the investment plan for Europe and inspire today's discussion. The recently published spring economic forecast predicts a cyclical upswing in Europe. Most data and indicators suggest that growth may further strengthen in the near future. This is a good news, but we have to make sure economic growth is lasting and it is sustainable. More needs to be done to ensure that this recovery is more than a seasonal phenomenon. The weakness of investment has been drag on the Union's recovery from the global economic and financial crisis. In 2014, total investment in the EU was about 15% below its level in 2007. The current subdued level of investment activity jeopardizes Europe's long-term growth potential. Europe is not making the productive investment in human and physical capital that is needed for future competitiveness growth and employment. Abundant liquidity exists in the corporate and financial sector, including in insurance. However, uncertainty about the economic outlook and high public and private debt in parts of the EU are holding back investment. Action is needed to break the vicious circle of underconfidence and underinvestment and transform it into a virtuous circle for growth and jobs. The challenge is to put this liquidity to productive use to support sustainable jobs and growth in Europe. What we need is confidence in the overall economic environment, predictability and clarity in policy making and the regulatory framework, effective use of scarce public resources trust in the economic potential of investment projects under development and sufficient risk pairing capacity to encourage project promoters. The investment plan for Europe with its three pillars can help unlock Europe's growth potential. By mobilizing additional investment through the European Fund for Strategic Investment, EFSI, enhancing advisory services, providing transparency on investment opportunities and dismantling regulatory barriers, Europe will definitely come out stronger. In the investment plan, the insurance industry, being the largest institutional investor in Europe, plays a significant role. The FC seeks to stimulate investment by using part of the EU budget to catalyze private investment. It aims to do this by reducing the risk of specific projects and SMEs through an EU guarantee. The current environment of low interest rates and high volatility is particularly challenging for long-term investors. The private sector demands, rightly, a return that reflects the risk it is undertaking. Investment in infrastructure often provides such attractive risk return profiles. By providing first loss guarantees, EFSI takes on part of the risk of new projects and will thus enable you to join under more favorable conditions. This should allow private investors, including insurance companies, pension funds and asset managers to co-finance projects or SMEs jointly with the EIP and financial institutions. That would not otherwise be financed due to the high risk profile, but which nevertheless are viable and attractive. The main eligibility criteria under FC include, first, the value added to EU and a contribution to the EU's policy objectives. Second, economic viability and value, prioritizing projects with high socioeconomic returns. Third, the potential for leveraging other sources of funding, and fourth, the rapid implementation of projects. The FC risk pairing capacity will consist of 21 billion euros, of which 16 billion euros will be a EU budget guarantee and 5 billion the EIB's contributions. On the back of the EU guarantee, the EIB 
would have the flexibility to work with a wide range of different financial instruments depending on the profile of the projects, including, for example, for example debt financing, subordinated or senior, guarantees, equity, quasi-equity and venture capital. Based on the EIB's experience with programs of a similar structure, the EIB and the Commission estimate that the FC should have an overall multiplier effect of 15. In example, each euro of public backing should attract an additional 15 euro of private investment. Thanks to the multiplying effect of the investment plan, the fund is expected to generate additional investments with the volume of at least 300 billion euro. Six EU member states have shown their support to the investment plan by pledging additional 35 billion in contributions to projects co-financed by the EFSI via the national development banks and we are confident that other will follow. Alongside the financing strand, we are also working on two equally important initiatives. The development of the European Investment Project Portal and the creation of a European Investment Advisory Hub. The promotion of transparent EU project pipeline is a very important initial building block for our ambitious plan to revive jobs, growth and investment, as it focuses on the project demand side and maximizes investor participation in financing. A forward-looking investment project pipeline will provide transparency and clarity to investors. It will give your confidence to build the necessary internal capabilities and local expertise. Investors will know that there are multiple opportunities rather than a one-off occasion and that they can amortize the cost of building capabilities and expertise across a portfolio of projects. Some insurance companies have already developed in-house skills and committed resources to long-term infrastructure investment. The availability of EFSI and of a project pipeline at EU level will encourage other insurers to follow. On the other hand, the European Investment Advisory Hub will offer a single entry point for advisory support for investments within the Union. Advisory Hub will help build local capacity to prepare, develop and implement projects, assist the selection and prioritization of economically sustainable investment and ensure the right ingredients for successful implementation and access to finance. In line with objectives of our plan, each of these measures is aimed to remove uncertainty in order to mobilize the much needed investment. These efforts will be complemented by a series of measures to remove barriers to investment with the aim to create a true single market. Ongoing work to remove these barriers include EU initiative to develop the energy union, a truly connected digital single market, a capital market union and an internal market strategy for goods and services. In this context, it is worth mentioning that IOPA is currently working on a definition for infrastructure as an asset class, which will take into account the special situation of infrastructure investment in the regulation for capital requirement. The IOPA report is expected for June. Also note that the Council adopted on 20th of April 2015 a regulation creating a new form of fund vehicle, the European Long-Term Investment Funds or LTIFs, which are marketable across borders. By virtue of the asset classes that they will be allowed to invest in, the LTIFs are expected to provide investors with long-term stable returns. This will in turn simplify and encourage the channeling of long-term capital into the European economy, in particular into infrastructure. Let me conclude here, focusing on the right reforms, expanding the role of private sector and developing an EU infrastructure market will foster economic growth, competitiveness, employment and social well-being. The investment plan lays 
the groundwork for a comprehensive partnership between us, the European institutions, the member states and you, the private sector. The success of the investment plan depends on your active support. I am confident that our joint efforts will make this initiative a success.